They'll be calling you a radical. I've been waiting as they tear down this building. This is the short condensed version. I made a big long video for the intro and the introduction of my book. I want to read a poem out of my book about Bobby Kennedy who in 1968 in that building 100 days before he was killed and the great progressive America was killed that day. I shook his hand right there in that building, the Promontory Tower here, which has so much significance. It's unbelievable, the significance. Like I said, I'll lay that out as I've been working on my book, as you guys know, and I got cancer. As I talk so much in details, I want to expose the truth about nuclear fallout, nuclear radiation, and the 300 open air tests in Nevada, and how we are all downwinders. I met a woman yesterday from Kansas, and we were talking about the incident of cancer. I says, why do not people in Kansas talk about and Oklahoma, as those tests, they took the brunt of it big time, hardcore. As I was a big, I liked Tom Landry when I was a kid. I liked the Cowboys when I was a little kid. As we all grew up, you know, I was an Orioles fan, but you know, we were sports fans and he died of leukemia. He was raised in Oklahoma. I think of Barack Obama's mom. How long was she, Kansas, died? As those tests, and as I was exposing that, as my father was nuked and murdered to death, murdered, 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 as so many were murdered. It, it's murder, it's plain murder. I wanna talk about the end of the great progressive America. As my book lays it out in detail, and I'm gonna give my book to all my YouTube viewers free. It'll be done soon. I've been reading, I had to rewrite it. As you know, I got leukemia and I got cancer. As I want to expose and tell the real truth of the nuclear murder that we will deal with for fucking centuries, then I get leukemia. So I had to rewrite. That book needed a whole other chapter because that book went from commentary to documentary. I want to read a poem out of my book about Bobby Kennedy. Because look what I used for a book poem. That was right here, that day. I was eight years old. I went with my great uncle, who was an amazing man. I got to shake Bobby Kennedy's hand that day. He patted me on the head. As 100 days later, the great progressive movement was over by a radical maniac named Saran Saran who still sits in a prison in California who by the way tried to kill Nixon right before that not long he was just hell bent he was a stall mucker at Santa Anita the deranged maniac that was the day at all and we haven't even had a progressive candidate since as the great conservative movement took full flight with the great John Bircher in 1980 the election of the great John and we've never looked back as look what we've turned into the great conservative movement, what did it give us? It's been nice, hasn't it? From the strongest middle class in world history to the weakest. So I use this as a bookmark. I, wrote, I write a lot of poetry, you know, art. A poem I wrote, 6608, Bobby's Tired Left Hand. It has been 40 years ago today, Bobby was killed in 1968. June 6, I played in our giant wood old barn with my cousins that day. Has always stood in my mind. I could sense the change then, I later lived the change. The day, that day in 1968, I stood and talked with my cousins about things like my baptism and the death of JFK and the recent death of Dr. King. Our family were Democrats. My father, his brothers and sisters, very political as the entire country was. Today, I unintentionally stood on the exact same spot talking to my cousin about politics. Forty years and one giant massive journey later, there I am in the exact spot talking about the exact same subject matter. Our barn was gone three months later. It was hit by a tornado right here in Utah, believe it or not. Our liberal progressive country slowly gone. My mother and I stayed up late to watch the California results. We lived on mountain time. It was late in the west, early in the a.m. in the east. I fell asleep in the morning. I woke up and walked in the kitchen like I always did. My mom was as 60s looking as it gets. She was making breakfast and was in tears. She, she said nothing. She had a Bakelite white radio on the kitchen counter. KLO, the only news we ever got in the county. The radio, Len Allen, a giant iconic voice who recently passed away. Bobby was dead. The feeling was like the one I watched when my did the feeling I had when they I watched them load my father in the body bag. I was eight, then 48. Kevin Blanche, June 6, 2008, 64th anniversary of D-Day. That was the end of, we went from this to this as they tried to kill Burt Nerney. 
the GOP radicals, as we went from the strongest middle class in world history, and in my book I break down who did it, how did it, and what did it in such detail, in such detail. I will expose things that will freak people who have never been. I've worked on this book for 30 years, as this is the Promontory Towers. As he said he thought he could tear it down in 10 days. I warned him. I warned him. And I get into my book about the historical significance of that building. Not just Bobby and the structure. He's day 40 something right now. I told him it's a fortress. It's a fortress. You're going to have a nightmare to turn it down. He didn't believe me. Oh, he believes me now. We just had a conversation. As the end of an era was the day. We have not had a progressive candidate since he was killed. Not one. As we've had nothing but one. And you want to go all the way back and say, oh, yeah, what about Jimmy Carter? Jimmy Carter was a Bible toting evangelical religious maniac nut, a conservative in all ways. You know, you try arguing that with me. We've had one conservative president after another as the great progressive country, the strongest middle class in history, died 100 years from the time I shook Bobby's hand right there, right there in that building. Is it ever going to change? Well, we thought maybe a couple years ago, but it didn't work out, did it? Kevin Blanched, stay tuned. My book's almost done. I'm gonna send it out to every one of my YouTube viewers for free. It's cheap. I'm gonna publish it on Lulu. It's I've been working on it for 30 years. It's almost done. As you know, I got cancer. I had to rewrite it. I'm gonna send it out to all you guys for free. All my YouTube subscribers, and then I want you guys to review it, and then we'll turn it loose on the public. Kevin Blanch, stay tuned. Oh, by the way, by the way, when I was in the hospital this winter, you know, I like to say, they'll be calling you a radical. That is the logical song. And I told my daughters, I said, I never got to see Roger Hodgson with a symphony. This, I love, I've been watching him for years on YouTube, his symphony. He wrote that song as I use. I love that song. You guys know that. I thought, well, if I get better and I survive, because when they gave me three months to live, my daughter says, what do you want to do? You know, and I said, that's one thing that I want to do. Go to Europe and see him in Paris or, you know, Morocco or wherever, these iconic places plays. Well, by fate or luck, I don't know what. He's coming here. He's at Deer Valley tomorrow, and I'm going. Anybody wants to go, feel free. It's an incredible venue with our beautiful, magnificent Utah Symphony which they are incredible. Together, it'll be awesome, it'll be great. I didn't have to go, he came here. Sometimes things just work out. Kevin Blanche, stay tuned.